Watch this man have a stroke on video while he's working out. If you pay close attention to the video, you can begin to notice some weakness on one side of his face. He's becoming increasingly tired and begins to lose his balance and has trouble with his dexterity in picking up his glove. This is a stroke. This is a video of a 52 year old man who presented to the emergency department after sustaining left-sided weakness while working out. As you saw in the video, he began to develop weakness on one side of his face, as well as his corresponding arm and leg. The CAT scan of his brain from the emergency department shows a hyperdense MCA sign. That's a blood clot in his middle cerebral artery, which is the most common artery that's involved in a stroke. Now remember, when you think of signs of a stroke, think of the FAST acronym. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, it's time to call 911. And luckily for him, he went to the emergency department within one and a half hours of symptom onset. Time is brain. The quicker we can intervene on someone with stroke-like symptoms, the more likely we're going to regain function in that individual. The majority of you guys got the answer correctly, and that is he needs TPA and or a thrombectomy. So let's break this case down. When we talk about strokes in the brain, there are two types, an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. An ischemic stroke is where blood is restricted to a portion of the brain and the flow gets cut off. It causes damage to the brain in which that blood vessel is supplying. Hemorrhagic stroke is where a blood vessel ruptures in the brain and you get bleeding within the brain causing damage. These are two different types of strokes with two very different types of treatment. In our patient's case, he has a clot sitting in his middle cerebral artery, which is causing occlusion of blood flow to that part of the brain. That artery supplies the part of our brain which controls movement or motor function. This occlusion in his right middle cerebral artery is affecting the left side of his body. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body and the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. So while he is working out, blood is not flowing to that part of the brain and he is beginning to develop weakness on that side. Risk factors for stroke include hypertension, smoking, obesity, alcohol use, and diet. Other potential causes of ischemic stroke include vasculitis, dissection, or other types of genetic disorders. At this point in this patient's workup, we don't care what caused it, we need to fix it and we need to fix it fast. Like I said, time is brain and the quicker we can restore blood flow to that part of the brain, the more likely this patient will not have permanent damage. An important part of the physical examination of a potential stroke patient includes performing the NIH stroke scale. The typical imaging workup for a suspected stroke includes a CT and a CT angiogram. MRI scans with diffusion weighted imaging can also be helpful in making that diagnosis. Acute interventions for MCA stroke include TPA and thrombectomy. TPA is a clot-busting medication which is administered intravenously or through the patient's IV and can break up that clot. This drug is typically administered within four and a half hours of symptom onset, so if the patient comes to the emergency room after that time window, they are no longer a candidate for this intervention, which is why it's so important to get to the ER if you have any of these symptoms. A mechanical thrombectomy is a procedure that we can typically perform within 24 hours of symptom onset, and that's where we insert a device into the artery to help retrieve that blood clot. So essentially that means we can go in and suck out the clot. As I mentioned before, TPA and mechanical thrombectomy are only options if the patient presents within a certain time frame after symptom onset. And that's why you have to act fast. So what happens to the patient if they come in and they are outside of this window? All we can do at that point is try to manage their symptoms. And we know that the brain damage will likely be permanent. Here is a CAT scan of the brain 24 hours after an MCA stroke, and you can already see that this dark part of the brain is damaged brain. The worrisome part about a large vessel occlusion is that you can get pretty significant swelling from that dead brain. Here is the same patient only 48 hours after the stroke, and now we're starting to see massive swelling as well as a significant amount of midline shift. Not only is the patient hemiplegic, but now this becomes a life-threatening condition. We try to treat the symptoms of brain swelling medically, but a lot of times with a large vessel occlusion in the non-dominant hemisphere or on the right side, the patient becomes a candidate for what's called a decompressive hemicraniectomy, 
where we can remove a part of the skull to allow the brain to swell outside of the skull. This takes a life-threatening condition and now can potentially save the patient's life. Once the swelling from the stroke subsides, the patient can then have their skull replaced and that's typically four to 12 weeks after the original stroke. What does a patient look like if they sustain permanent damage from a right MCA stroke? For a right-sided stroke, the patient will have permanent weakness on the left side of the face, arm, and leg. This may lead to coordination and balance troubles as well as difficulty walking. Good news about a stroke on the right side of the brain is typically in the majority of patients, the right side is the non-dominant side of the brain. The left side of the brain in most people is the dominant hemisphere that controls our ability to understand and express language. It means a stroke on the right side will not affect those types of functions and the patient can converse and understand language normally. Back to our patient. Because of the fast actions of his friends at the gym, they got him to the emergency department immediately. He had IV TPA and that busted up the clot and he regained all of his function within two hours of presentation. He sustained no permanent damage from his stroke. He's pretty lucky and on his workup, he was also diagnosed with atrial fibrillation or an abnormal heart rate that led to the stroke. He is now on anticoagulation for stroke prevention. Remember the FAST algorithm to save a life. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.